all the seats were sold out for the rising idol group in town, Blue Impulse. The excitement in the air was palpable, and among the crowd was the center of the group, Koromiya Rai, a mere 15-year-old dynamo. Little did the fans know, there was a secret lurking behind that idol smile, a secret more elusive than finding matching socks in the laundry. While he had been watching Koromiya Rado from behind the screen and never got the chance to talk to her face to face. Meanwhile, in a seemingly ordinary classroom, a teacher announced the return of the academic assessment tests. He believed their tests were more difficult compared to other schools, but that will greatly affect their future academic advancement. The teacher warned the students that their performance could impact their academic future, urging them not to stumble right out of the gate. As names were called, Hirono Hizashi found himself fervently praying for good grades. He believed that scoring above 90 was as tricky. His internal monologue became a mix of desperation and divine negotiation, pleading with the higher powers for a grade that would please his mother. After all, failing to secure a good grade meant facing the wrath of his mom. And then, as if the universe enjoyed a good laugh, Hizashi learned that his overachieving classmate, Akari, had aced the test with a perfect score. Now, the pressure was. Little did he know, the ride was just beginning and the real test was about to unfold. Meanwhile, Hiruno Hizashi discovered the marks of the class idol, Kuromiya Rai, who studied in his class and had achieved the elusive perfect score. She is known to be the idol of the class, the entire school, or simply the local idol known by everyone. She is a genuine idol, as not only is she beautiful, but she also achieves very high grades in her studies. She is beautiful, intelligent, and wise. She is said to be a generation genius idol. Kuromiya Rei and Hizashi live in two separate worlds, compared to him, who can't even excel in studying. She can balance both studying and being an idol at the same time. That is the reason he wants to be at least on par with her in studying, if nothing else. Lost in thoughts of Kuromiya Rei, Hizashi's name is called by the teacher. Reality snaps him back and he stands up, making his way to collect his test results. His teacher informs him that he is now the proud owner of a whopping four marks, so he will be in after-school makeup. Hizashi is very embarrassed to collect such a grade. His classmates laugh at his failing grade. He wanted to get a perfect score on this test and study hard, but here he was, standing in front of the entire class, embarrassed and ashamed of his points. After the bell rings, signaling the end of class, Hiruno Hizashi joins his friends for a post-school escapade. As they step out, their eyes catch a sight that piques Hizashi's curiosity, a group of interviewers waiting in line. Unable to contain his intrigue, he asks his friends about the commotion. His friend replies that they are interviewers who will be interviewing Kuromiya. He is shocked to see the number of interviewers waiting for her. He says that it is genius to have so many interviewers waiting in line for someone. Someone questioned her, as she was seen going straight to her home earlier to practice for the live concert. Hizashi, staring at his disappointing test score, shrugs, confessing, he has no clue why this army of interviewers is eagerly awaiting someone who isn't even present. He cannot believe that he has to attend the makeup classes for such simple mistakes. What's worse is that he does not know what excuse to give to his mother. As Hiruno Hizashi strolls towards the makeup class, he can't shake off the disappointment etched on his test paper. His attention, however, is diverted as he hears the sound of someone tackling basic mathematics. The voice is coming from the makeup class classroom. Confused, Hizashi wonders if is this the place for the makeup class. He looks around to see and notices that he is in the middle school level. Driven by curiosity, he decides to investigate and cautiously swings open the classroom door. Faced to his amazement, he finds Kuromiya Rei deeply immersed in solving basic math problems. Their eyes lock, both mirroring surprise at this unexpected encounter. Hizashi caught off guard, manages to blurt out, is she in the wrong classroom? The air thickens with curiosity and confusion as two worlds collide in the most unexpected of settings. She looks at him with confusion, then says that the teacher told her to come to this classroom, still confused with what to think of it. He says that there might be some mistake and the classroom was double booked, to which she says maybe with embarrassment. For some reason, she is sweating a lot. He questions her about what she was reciting earlier. She replies by saying that those were the lyrics for her next live performance. This is a lie as he heard basic maths problems being solved out loud. Summoning a bit of courage, Hiruno Hizashi cautiously ventures if it could be by any chance that she is having trouble studying. 
He watches Koromiya Rei's expression shift, a tinge of embarrassment coloring her features. Panic sets in for Hizashi as he quickly realizes the sensitivity of his question. He apologizes for asking such a question and tells her that he knows this is rude to ask. However, instead of dismissing him, Koromiya Rei surprises him by looking at him with a hint of curiosity. Can I ask you something? She inquires, diverting the conversation in a new direction. The air is thick with anticipation as Hizashi wonders what she might want to know. He is shocked as he is now confronted with the surreal reality that he's going to be taking makeup classes with none other than the genius idol Kuromiya Rai. Finding a seat beside her, Hizashi still wears an expression of surprise and confusion. Kuromiya Rai, with a blush of embarrassment, confesses, I'm not an idol. Hiruno Hizashi's eyebrows shoot up in surprise. Processing this unexpected revelation, questions swirl in his mind, wondering about the real identity of the girl who had become a symbol of excellence in his eyes. Curiosity peaked. She hands him her test result. As Hizashi looks at her score, he finds out she got 16 marks in the test. Even though she claims to have received it with confidence, questions linger in his mind. They discuss their test marks, sharing the weight of scoring less than expected. Kuromiya reassures him that there is just a minor mistake in the test. If it wasn't made, the score would be higher. A sense of relief washes over Hizashi, realizing that even someone he perceived as a paragon of perfection faces challenges. Kuromiya Rei, a girl who had seemed to effortlessly balance everything, was, in fact, just like him a normal girl navigating the trials of academics. As the revelation sinks in, Hizashi contemplates the pressure and expectations placed on Kuromiya. She, too, seemed to struggle, and he wondered if the stories about geniuses effortlessly conquering all were merely hearsay. The realization dawns on him that Kuromiya Rei, with her test paper in hand, is not just a symbol of excellence, but a fellow student grappling with the complexities of academic life. As the two huddle over their test papers, attempting to untangle the knots of confusion, Kurumi Yuriai glances at the clock and mentions that she has a lecture at six, so she needs to hurry and solve the problem. Sensing an opportunity to lend a hand, Hiruno Hizashi musters the courage and asks her if it is okay with her and if would she like him to help her. Kurumi Yuriai, looking genuinely surprised, questions why he would like to help her, as he is also taking the same makeup classes as her. Hizashi, shocked and a tad embarrassed by the truth in her words, stumbles for a response. Despite the unexpected twist, he agrees with her. Standing up, Hiruno Hizashi decides to share his test result with Kuromiya Rei. She takes a look and comments, he got awful marks. She examines the test more closely and tells him there is a chance he got low grades because his answers were misplaced. Hizashi, seeing the error with newfound clarity, agrees and tells her that he got everything six out of place from the fifth question. If it wasn't for that mistake, he would have gotten a 94. Kiramiya Rei, a hint of amusement in her eyes, remarks that this is the first time she has seen such a manga-like mistake. Hizashi, though finding the mistake amusing himself, is quick to defend, saying that even though the mistake is very funny, it is what he did wrong. With a hint of determination, Hiruno Hizashi offers that he can help her with her test, even though he scored less than her. She is hesitant to answer her at first, but then tells him that it is okay. She will manage as it is her problem after all. She says that it is her problem not only as a student, but also as an idol. She has to change and correct things for her own good. Sensing her hesitation, he quickly adds, that's right, and apologizes, asking her to forget that he asked her to let him help. Hiruno Hizashi retreats to his seat, where his belongings lay scattered, his mind swirling with thoughts. As he settles back, he wonders what compelled him to offer help, and why he then apologized. He can't help but wonder about Kuromiya Rei. Thoughts swirl in his mind, contemplating her choice to pursue the path of being an idol while balancing it with her own will. A sense of realization hits him. There shouldn't be any room for him to interfere in her journey. In the quiet recesses of his thoughts, he chides himself, labeling himself as the one who's being foolish. He admonishes himself not to get carried away with assumptions and unwarranted concerns. He glancing at Kuromi Arai, diligently attempting to solve the math problems. Hizashi can't help but worry. Will she be okay? The high school they attend is a private Ute University-affiliated second high school. It is an ultra-elite school, 
It is possible to advance internally at the university through an escalator system. However, in exchange, the level of regular exams and daily classes is extremely high. In other words, the level of makeup classes is also correspondingly high. After an hour of continuous struggle with the test, Iruno Hizashi finally stretches his arms, signifying the end of his battle with mathematical conundrums. As he glances at the completed test one more time, a sense of accomplishment washes over him. The questions proved to be quite challenging, but he persevered. In a moment of realization, he wonders about Kuromiya Rei's progress. He turns his gaze toward her, only to find her still immersed in the complexities of basic math. It seems as though time has stood still for her, a realization that prompts Hizashi to contemplate the stark difference in their approaches to the test. He can't help but ponder how she even got accepted into this elite school if basic math appears to be a formidable adversary. The mysteries of academic prowess and acceptance criteria swirl in his mind, creating an atmosphere of curiosity and contemplation. Hiruno Hizashi, observing Kuromiya Rei's struggle, gathers his resolve and tells her that he will be teaching her today. He reminds her that her lesson starts at 6 o'clock and expresses concern about her current pace, indicating that it doesn't seem like she'll make it on time. Trying to spare her embarrassment, he quickly adds that she can't help it if she is busy. However, Kuromiya Ria Rei, with a sense of determination, replies she is fine. She says that if he helps her do the test, it still won't solve the problem. Confused, Hizashi asks what she means. She replies that at this rate, she will have to retire from being an idol. She tells him that her mom allowed her to become an idol on the condition that she balance it with her studies. She promised her mom that she would quit being an idol if her grades dropped even a little bit. Recently, she got seriously scolded and the weight of that reprimand hangs heavily over her. He tells her that he can understand her as her mom is also scary when it comes to academics. Kiramiya Ray confesses that she's currently lying to her fans and can't continue being an idol in this half-assessed state. Idols, she says, must be something everyone admires. If she doesn't solve the test on her own, it becomes meaningless. Stunned, Shizashi apologizes for offering to help. Karomi Aregi, feeling the weight of her situation, declares that she's not fit to be an idol and starts crying. Uncomfortable witnessing her distress, Hizashi looks away deciding to erase the answers on his test. In this unexpected turn of events, the makeup class becomes a crucible of emotions and realizations where the pursuit of academic excellence collides with the demands of the idol world. Hiruno Hizashi, breaking the heavy silence, looks at Kuromiya Rei and gently asks if she would like to solve the problem together. She looks at him with surprise, questioning why he would want to do that, especially considering she's the one taking the longest. Hizashi, with a reassuring smile, explains that it will be two or three times faster if two people try to solve the problem. Taking the initiative, he stands up and positions himself in front of Kuromiya, reminding her that, at this moment, he's not talking to the idol Kuromiya, but to a girl trying to solve a problem in her test, he encourages her to look at the challenge as equals, meeting his gaze. She remains silent. Hizashi gently urges her to finish the test before the time of her lesson starts. Agreeing with a nod, they embark on the journey of solving the problems together. The quiet classroom, once filled with tension, now hosts a collaboration where two students, bound by the challenges of academics, work side by side to conquer the hurdles before them. Hiruno Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei work together, tackling each problem with determination. Hizashi's encouraging words serve as a guiding light for Kuromiya, boosting her confidence with every challenge she overcomes. As they collaborate, the once formidable test begins to yield to their joint efforts. Upon completing the test, Kuromiya Rei humbly apologizes to Hizashi for relying on him to teach her in the end, admitting that she got too comfortable. Hizashi dismisses her concerns, assuring her that there is nothing to worry about. He even encourages her to ask more questions if she needs any help. Leaving the classroom together, they step into the outside world, only to encounter the same bunch of interviewers eagerly waiting to catch a glimpse of Kuromiya Rei. This reminds Hizashi of the popular idol he is standing with. Kuromiya Rei, with a determined expression, requests Iruno Hizashi. She expresses her desire not to stay in the current situation, yearning to be called a genius again without feeling ashamed. In a surprising turn of events, she asks him if it's okay, would study with her from now on. Hizashi, taken aback, hesitates and finally agrees, the words leaving his mouth with difficulty. 
As the gravity of the situation sinks in, Hizashi wonders how she could ask him to study with her in front of the mass media. He questions if it's appropriate for her to make such a request in the public eye. Trying to diffuse the tension, he suggests they get along as friends and classmates. She points out that it is weird to point out those details. Kuromi Arai, unfazed by the details, stands there for a moment, leaving Hizashi in a state of uncertainty. Taking a step back, she signals that she's leaving and mentions she'll see him tomorrow. Hizashi agrees, left contemplating the unexpected turn of events and marveling at her determination. And just like that, in the backdrop of prying eyes and flashing cameras, Hiruno Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei's secret makeup classes have begun. Hiruno Hizashi returns home to face the wrath of his enraged mother, who, upon seeing his test results, demands an explanation. Sitting there with a mix of embarrassment and fear, he manages a simple apology, well aware of the consequences of falling short of her academic expectations. Meanwhile, Kuromiya Raiderai breaks the news to her friend that she's being taught by someone else for her test. Surprised by this unusual reliance on external help, her friend probes, curious about the mysterious tutor. Inquiring about Hizashi, she wonders if he's good-looking, prompting Kuromiya to clarify that they were just studying, emphasizing his kindness for helping someone like her. She says that she might be looking forward to going to school for the first time in a while. Her friend acknowledges her decision. As Kuromiya's friend delves further, asking for the name of the boy who taught her, Kuromiya conveniently claims to have forgotten. Her friend laughs and tells her that this is her old habit of always forgetting things. She laughs and asks her if she is good at playing an honor student character. She gets irritated and tells her friend that she is very annoying. In the parallel worlds of academics and idol life, both Hiruno Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei find themselves navigating challenges with their unique struggles and encounters. Little do they know, the threads of their stories are interwoven, creating a tapestry that unfolds with each passing day as secrets, friendships, and unexpected alliances shape what is about to come. The next day at school, Hiruno Hizashi finds the atmosphere buzzing with excitement as everyone continues to talk about the amazing idol Kuromiya Rai. Conversations revolve around her recent live concert, with people expressing awe at how incredible it was. Hizashi observes the animated discussions, realizing that Kuromiya Rei has left an indelible mark on the minds of those around him. As the chatter about the genius idol circulates, Hizashi notices Kuromiya Rei herself approaching. The talk of her being labeled the genius idol, as written in a net article, echoes in the air. Kuromiya Rei is not just any idol. She's a vital part of the super popular group, Blue Impulse. Their albums are selling like hotcakes, and the public is enamored with her ability to effortlessly balance the demands of idol life with her academic responsibilities. Hizashi, caught up in these discussions, finds himself wondering if Kuromiya Rea is truly a perfect human, as many seem to believe. Reflecting on his role as her impromptu tutor, he nervously contemplates the surreal reality of teaching someone so accomplished. The weight of the situation begins to dawn on him, realizing that there are many aspects to this seemingly flawless idol that he has yet to comprehend. Little does he know that this unexpected connection might lead to more revelations and shared experiences between the ordinary student and the extraordinary idol. The surreal nature of the situation leaves Hiruno Hizashi questioning the reality of it all. As conversations about Koromiya Rei Ai continue to swirl around him, he finds the experience so incomprehensible that he begins to doubt if it's a dream. The events seem too fantastical, and the lines between reality and imagination blur in his mind. Observing Koromiya Rei engaged in conversation about the next class, reality seems to warp. She is informed that the next class is in a different classroom, and the ordinary routines of school life play out around her. Despite this, people continue talking about her, emphasizing the extraordinary nature of her presence. Suddenly, Kuromiya Rei comes towards Hizashi, stating that she'll see this simple statement jolts him back into reality. The clarity of her words hits him, and he realizes that he did teach Kuromiya Rei yesterday. It wasn't a dream. After school, Hiruno Hizashi nervously takes his seat in the makeup class, his mind swirling with anxiety. As he contemplates the situation, it feels overwhelming and self-doubt creeps in. He questions whether someone like him can truly be an effective tutor. The weight of teaching a genius idol like Kuromiya Rao seems almost surreal to him. He mid his anxious thoughts. The door slams open, disrupting his contemplation. Kuromiya Rai strides in, 
Already studying the right-hand rule, the unexpected entrance startles Hizashi, yet it signals the beginning of another session. The both Hirono Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei exchange greetings as they prepare for another session of makeup class. Hizashi, still grappling with his doubts and anxieties, finds the answer to his lingering question. It dawns on him that perhaps he's been tasked with teaching Kuromiya Reya, not because he uncovered the secret that challenges that perception of Kuromiya Rai being a genius. Due to their busy schedule, Kuromiya Reya fell behind in her studies. She wonders why she can't study properly. If she gets another failing grade on a test, her mother will make her quit being an idol. Stepping forward, Hiruno Hizashi offers a sincere apology to Kuromiya Rei. He then informs her that today's assignment is Japanese history. Even as she continues studying the right-hand rule in physics, confusion is evident on her face. The stark contrast between the reality he sees and the image painted by people's perceptions baffles him. In a moment of realization, Hizashi contemplates the significant gap between the public image of Kuromiya Rei as an amazing idol and the reality he's witnessing in the makeup class. For any revelation that he was chosen to assist her, to prevent any imperfections that could tarnish her status as a perfect idol, dawns on him. It's a role he unwittingly stepped into after discovering her secret by chance. Kuromiya Rei, with a hint of hesitation, poses a question to Hiruno Hizashi, asking who he is. Caught off guard, Hizashi is momentarily surprised by the unexpected inquiry. Puzzled, he wonders what she means by such a question, reminding her that they studied together just yesterday. He questions if she doesn't remember. However, Kuromiya Rayolai clarifies that her inquiry is about his name. She admits she hasn't heard his name yet. Hizashi, relieved yet feeling a tad awkward, confesses that he hasn't introduced himself. Taking a moment, he offers his name, Hiruno Hizashi. She repeats his name as if committing it to memory, causing a momentary panic in Hizashi fearing he might have been forgotten. To his relief, she assures him that she's got his name now. Kuromiya Reishi, a trace of concern in her voice, inquires if Hiruno Hizashi was seen by anyone before coming to the makeup class. Offering reassurance, he confirms that no one saw him, bringing a sense of relief to the situation. With a nod, she suggests they start studying and both of them divert their attention to the academic task at hand. Silently, they delve into their assignments, focusing on Japanese history, while the distant sounds of a gym class echo outside. The rhythmic tick-tock of the clock provides a steady background beat, accompanied by sporadic voices engaged in physical training. Despite the external noise, Hizashi finds it challenging to maintain focus, constantly reminding himself to be conscious as he's sitting beside an idol. The realization that they are the only two people in the class adds an extra layer of self-consciousness. Amidst the quiet study session, Hiruno Hizashi catches a waft of a beautiful scent in the air, further diverting his attention from the academic task at hand. Reminding himself to focus on their studies, he tries to shake off the distraction, but his gaze inadvertently shifts towards Kuromiya Rei, noticing his distraction. Kuromiya looks at him with a questioning expression. Hizashi, momentarily captivated by her beauty, manages to inquire if there's a problem. She, in turn, expresses her confusion over a particular question related to the introduction of Buddhist statues and scriptures to Japan, requiring the answer to include the name of the emperor. Examining the specialized nature of the question, Hizashi empathizes, acknowledging it as a challenging query. Koromiya, feeling a tinge of embarrassment, confesses that she struggles with such questions. Hizashi, trying to ease the tension, reassures her that there's a lot to remember for such queries. However, she admits her difficulty in recalling names. Hizashi questions if this isn't a fatal flaw for a celebrity. She agrees to his question confessing that she is often scolded by her manager for forgetting the names of her co-stars. She adds that she is trying to remember them for the record. Hizashi, feeling a touch of awkwardness after her confession, offers a piece of advice. He suggests trying to remember people by the context in which she meets them. To help Kuromiya Rei with her name recognition struggles, Hiruno Hizashi scribbles a drawing while explaining that understanding the era and context in which a person lived could make it considerably easier to remember them. She looks at the drawing attentively, absorbing his explanation. Observing the drawing, Kuromiya comments on Hizashi's artistic skills, noting that he's good at drawing. Seizing the opportunity to aid her memory further, Hizashi suggests creating additional associations. With that, he sketches another tree-like structure, providing a visual aid to help her understand the subject and, hopefully, remember names more effectively. 
Embracing the teaching moment. Hiruno Hizashi emphasizes the importance of understanding concepts from a particular point of view. He assures Kuromiya Rade that while it may be challenging initially, this approach can prove beneficial for long-term memory. As he begins answering the question, providing a simplified overview of the problem, he mentions the king of Baiji introducing Buddhism and sutras to Emperor Kinmei, attempting to promote them in Japan. However, Kuromiya struggles to catch the names of the kings, drawing a small smile from Hizashi. Reassuring her, he advises against rushing the learning process and suggests writing and reading the information repeatedly to aid memory. He recommends relying on visuals and understanding the challenges she faces. Expressing her thoughts, Kuromiya shares that she had considered the visual approach but commends Hizashi for being an excellent teacher. Grateful for her words, Hizashi thanked her for the compliment. Kuromiya expresses that he made it easy for her to understand everything and believes she will be able to remember the names. Kuromiya Rei expresses her gratitude once again, thanking Hiruno Hizashi for his assistance. However, there's a slight hiccup as she calls him Fujita instead of his actual name. Hizashi, feeling a sudden wave of shyness, awkwardly corrects her, stating that his name is Hiruno Hizashi. Inwardly, he can't help but think that she might be struggling with remembering names. After 30 minutes of focused studying, Hiruno Hizashi approaches Kuromiya Reidi to check on her progress with the assignment. She shares that she has studied a lot and, curious about his progress, inquires about him. To Hizashi's shock, he discovers his name written all over her notebook. Processing the unexpected sight, he hesitantly asks why she has written his name so many times. Kuromiya, with candor, confesses that she couldn't remember his name. In response, Hizashi, with a hint of embarrassment, suggests that she prioritizes learning the names of more important people over his. He encourages her not to worry about his name. Despite her apologies for what she perceives as a waste of time, Hizashi finds happiness in the realization that she will finally remember his name. However, a trace of horror creeps into his thoughts as he wonders about the potential consequences. He fears that if she struggles to remember other people's names because of him, it might not bode well, especially considering what her mother might think about it if Kuromiya Rei is not able to remember other people's names because of him. As Hiruno Hizashi glances at Kuromiya Rei's notebook, he discovers more than just his name written down. To his surprise, she had included some context about him, describing him as kind, good at teaching, and someone skilled in drawing. The unexpected comments catch him off guard, prompting a moment of disbelief as he questions whether the context is truly about him. Plainly happy and slightly taken aback by the positive impressions, Hizashi realizes that Kuromi Arei has gone the extra mile to remember him in her way. He thinks that if Kuromi Arei was trying to put into practice what was taught in her way as he had expected, she would be motivated to learn. It's just that the direction of her efforts is a little strange. Despite the unexpected direction of her efforts, he finds himself staring at her, contemplating her unique approach. In this moment of realization, a desire to support Kuromi Arei begins to blossom within Hizashi, Standing up, Kuromiya begins calling Hizashi's name repeatedly. He looks at her with surprise, wondering and questioning why she is repeating his name so persistently. Unfazed, she approaches him and calls his name once more, declaring that she will now remember it. Hizashi, caught off guard, questions what she means by this unexpected declaration. Despite his initial surprise, Kuromiya proves determined. After this, she channels her efforts into remembering the names of other people, demonstrating a newfound commitment to improving her memory. Little do they know, this exchange might be the beginning of a collaborative journey in which they both learn and grow from each other's unique perspectives. While standing next to Hiruno Hizashi, Kuromiya Rei whimsically remarks that even if he were to live in Europe, her unexpected comment makes Hizashi nervous, unsure of where the conversation is heading. However, she expresses gratitude for his efforts. Puzzled by the singing tone in which she delivers her thanks, Hizashi wonders if he was supposed to be teaching English at that moment. Kuromiya pauses and asks him how she did, prompting him to realize that she was singing a song. This unexpected turn of events leaves Hizashi questioning how their study session led to a musical interlude. About 30 minutes ago, Kuromiya handed Haruno Hizashi the lyrics of her upcoming song, scheduled to be performed in the music class the next day. However, she confesses that she doesn't know how to read or pronounce the English words and seeks his help. Intrigued, Hizashi wonders if she always relied on cue cards for English songs as an idol. 
Upon seeing his questioning expression, Kuromiya apologizes, realizing it's not directly related to their supplementary lessons. Hizashi assures her that he's willing to help with anything she struggles with, and she expresses her gratitude with a hint of embarrassment. Diving into the task at hand, Hizashi suggests they start by reading the lyrics from the beginning. The two find themselves in a supplementary English class, focusing on pronunciation for Kuromiya's upcoming performance. However, she encounters difficulty with certain words, particularly struggling to say Europe. Feeling frustrated, she turns to Hizashi for help, questioning why it sounds like a moon's name. Hizashi corrects her pronunciation to Europa'ai and Kuromiya. Somewhat disheartened, comments on the challenges of understanding English as a Japanese person. Unfazed, Hizashi encourages her, urging her not to use such cheesy excuses. He suggests working on fixing the accent and vowel pronunciation, believing it to be more crucial. Kuromiya, frustrated with herself, contemplates catching the flu, but Hizashi quickly dismisses the idea, reminding her not to daydream and to keep her spirits up. Hirano Hizashi comes up with an idea to help Kuromiya improve her English pronunciation, suggesting that she should pay attention to distinguishing between the sounds of L and R. Kuromiya looks at him with confusion, prompting him to explain that failing to make this distinction might result in sentences with unintended and possibly amusing meanings. She agrees to give it a try and asks him to pay attention as she practices. Taking Hizashi's advice to heart, Kuromiya begins reciting the lyrics, making a conscious effort to differentiate between L and R sounds. She says the words in the lyrics. She will make sure to be famous for him to hear, even if he is to live in Europe. As she practices, she emphasizes the use of her mouth muscles following Hizashi's guidance. After completing a sentence, she eagerly asks Hizashi for feedback. Caught off guard by the unexpected nature of the exercise, Hizashi finds himself in an awkward position. He reflects on the realization that the reality of teaching an idol is quite different from what is seen on TV. Despite his initial hesitation, Kuromiya presses for a response, asking how she did. She asks if he is listening properly. She repeats the lyrics one more time, which makes Hizashi very nervous. She asks how she did it this time after completing the lyrics Hizashi, Still somewhat nervous, assures her that she did amazingly and suggests moving on to the next part. Delighted by the positive feedback, Kuromiya proposes reading more. Hizashi, feeling the pressure, nervously suggests taking a break. The next day in the first music class, the teacher calls upon Kuromiya Reiwai to step forward and showcase her singing talents. Hizashi, sitting anxiously in his seat, wonders if Kuromiya will manage to pull off her singing performance. He reflects on the improvements in her pronunciation, but worries that she might not have had enough practice for singing. With his arms crossed in a praying position, he braces himself for the moment. As Kuromiya Ryari begins to sing, a wave of astonishment washes over Hizashi and the other students in the class. Her voice, clear and enchanting, resonates throughout the room. She sings the lyrics with confidence and grace, captivating everyone with her performance. Hizashi, initially unsure of what to expect, is shocked by the beauty of her voice. At that moment, he realizes that Kuromiya Rei is far from an ordinary girl. She truly is an extraordinary person. After her performance concludes, the teacher, visibly moved, expresses her admiration for Kuromiya's talent. She praises the clarity and beauty of her voice, confessing that she is left speechless. She comments that she is truly moved by her beautiful voice and amazing performance. Kuromiya graciously thanked the teacher for the positive feedback, leaving Hizashi relieved and proud to see her excel in their performance. After her initial performance, the teacher was so impressed that she requested Kuromiya Rei to sing the song she had planned for the next week. Everyone in the class also agree and make cheer her up asking her to sing again as they want to hear her one more time. Kuromiya Rei is nervous to hear everything. Hizashi, aware that she hasn't practiced the upcoming song, is also anxious about the situation. Kuromiya, feeling nervous, glances at Hizashi with a hopeful look, silently asking for assistance. The teacher encourages Kuromiya Rie to start the next song and just as she's about to begin, she whispers to Hizashi for help. Caught in a dilemma, he raises his hand, diverting the teacher's attention to himself. Hizashi suggests that it might be better not to strain Kuromiya Rie's voice too much, trying to save her from potential embarrassment. 
Kuromi Arei is stunned to see him raising his voice to help her out. The teacher looks at her once more, then agreeing to Hizashi's suggestion, says that they should save the next song for the coming week. While Hizashi is relieved that Kuromiya won't have to sing an unprepared song, some classmates express their dissatisfaction, feeling that the flow of events has been disrupted. They question Hizashi's motives, wondering who he is and suggesting that he might be trying to appeal to Kuromiya. The comments make Hizashi feel nervous and awkward. As the class ends, he stands there, contemplating how he's perceived by others and feeling a bit saddened by the reactions of his classmates. He wonders if he is being thought of as someone who can't read the room. He is feeling sad after hearing the comments from his classmates. As Hizashi stands there contemplating the aftermath of the classroom incident, he suddenly hears someone calling him from behind. Turning around, he finds Kuromiya Rei standing there. She expresses her gratitude, thanking him for what he did earlier in the class. Hizashi, feeling a bit awkward, apologizes for interfering in her matters. Kuromiya Rai assures him that she doesn't mind at all. An air of nervousness envelops them, leaving both unsure of what to say. Kuromiya Rai attempts to convey something, and when Hizashi looks at her questioningly, she compliments him for being cool and standing up for her in the classroom. Trying to ease the tension, she sings a lyric from one of her songs, asking if her pronunciation has improved. Hizashi, feeling a bit uncomfortable with the chosen lyrics, suggests that next time they should study the meaning of sentences as well. Kuromi Yarei, puzzled by his comment, looks at him in confusion. As they stand there, exchanging thoughts and compliments, the atmosphere becomes charged with a mix of uncertainty and a budding connection. Little do they realize that their journey of collaboration and shared struggles is just beginning, promising unexpected twists and turns in the days to come. After school, Hiruno Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei proceed to their usual makeup class classroom for their study session. As they delve into their studies, Kuromiya Rei Arai surprises Hizashi by inquiring if he uses the messaging app line. Still taken aback, Hizashi stammers in response, confirming that she indeed means line. Kuromiya Rei takes out her smartphone and suggests exchanging line information. She believes it would facilitate their communication and cooperation. Hizashi, still reeling from the idea of sharing line with a famous idol, wonders how he found himself tutoring the renowned genius idol Kuromiya Rei. In the midst of this, he contemplates their shared objective of escaping the clutches of supplementary lessons. Kuromiya Rei emphasizes the benefits of exchanging line information, emphasizing the ease of communication for collaborative learning and discussion. On the flip side, Hizashi finds himself in a panic, questioning whether it's okay to exchange line information with Kuromiya Rei. He recalls the advice not to worry about unnecessary things, yet the prospect of sharing line with an idol overwhelms him. Thoughts race through his mind contemplating the potential challenges of opening his phone in a crowded space. As Kuromi Array looks at him with curiosity, he grapples with the desire to have a classmate's contact information, especially since he hasn't made any friends in high school. His mind spirals into an overthinking frenzy, considering worst-case scenarios like phone hacking and pondering how he would handle such a situation. As Kuromi Array expresses concern for him, he meets her gaze with a mix of panic and uncertainty, unsure of how to navigate this unexpected turn of events. Noticing her actions, Hizashi inquires about what she's doing. She explains that she can add a friend by shaking her phone, but he informs her that the feature was removed a long time ago. Blushing with embarrassment, Kuromi Ariari admits that she's not that proficient with smartphones and has never exchanged contacts by herself. Surprised by this revelation, Hizashi decides to add her via QR code. They exchange line information and he notices her profile picture with a cute dog, prompting an unexpected compliment from him. When she questions his well-being, he deflects by expressing admiration for the adorable dog in her picture. Karomiya Rai shares that her dog is a three-year-old poodle and she enjoys going on walks with him. Curious if Hizashi has a dog too, he denies it, stating that he doesn't own any dogs. Kuromiya Rei excitedly shares her love for dogs, emphasizing how nice and cute they are. She suggests to Hizashi that he should consider getting a dog. However, his attention is still focused on her profile picture. Confused by his question, she eventually understands and explains that she had hair extensions in the picture, causing the difference in her appearance. Hizashi, curious about the hair extensions, asks her if she wears them all the time. Karomi Array explains that she wears them regularly at work, but has to remove them when at school due to the school rules. 
Removing the hair extensions each time can be challenging for her. After the surprising discussion about hair extensions, Kurumiya Rea I reveals that she uses them to transition between her everyday self and her idol persona. Hizashi is genuinely impressed, considering it as her on and off switch. However, he can't help but question whether she is truly relaxed at that moment. Confused by his inquiry, Kuromiya Rayai looks at him for clarification. Hizashi, ever thoughtful, elaborates on the challenges of balancing the demanding life of an idol with rigorous studying, worried about her well-being. He openly asks if she genuinely feels relaxed and encourages her to reach out if the pressures become overwhelming. Blushing, Kuromiya Rei assures him that she can indeed relax around him. She gets shy and picks up her stuff. He asks what is wrong to which she tells him that she has a lesson, so she needs to go home. She storms out of the classroom while he sits there contemplating what he has done. The following day at school, Hizashi finds himself consumed by anxiety after the events of the previous day. Unable to focus on his studies at home, he spent the time waiting for a line message from Kuromiya Rai, but none arrive. Reflecting on the situation, he considers the challenges she may face in reaching out. Given her status as an idol, disappointed in himself, Hizashi deems the waiting and anticipation a waste of time, even though there wasn't much to study in the first. Suddenly, a classmate announces the creation of a group, prompting Hizashi to take out his phone and join the class group. As he scrolls through the messages, the group encourages students to get along throughout the year. The discussion within the group revolves around topics like the photosynthesis rate problem and recommendations for papers on the light saturation point. Hizashi, realizing the academic focus of the elite high school, becomes increasingly anxious about his situation. Almost while scrolling through the class group messages, Hizashi spots another profile picture of Kuromiya Rai. Intrigued, he contemplates whether she changed her profile picture, noticing her wearing hair extensions in this one. Deciding to add her as a friend online, he realizes it's a different account from the one he added yesterday. Curiosity getting the better of him. He questions and inquires about having two accounts. Kuromiya Ria confirms having two accounts, and when asked if he can share this information, discreetly signals him to look in her direction. Following her indication, Hizashi directs his attention to Kuromiya Rai, where she subtly signals him not to disclose the existence of the second account. He's left in suspense. He contemplates the newfound secret and wonders about the appropriate course of action. Hizashi grapples with the dilemma of holding yet another secret about Kuromiya Rei, pondering the implications of this unexpected revelation. Overhearing the boys talking about Kuromiya Rai's patience and expressing a desire to be friends with her, Hizashi contemplates the challenges that come with her status as an idol. Observing her giving diplomatic, but somewhat bland replies to their questions about studies, he wonders about the daily struggles she must face in navigating such situations. The boys, unaware of the complexities behind her responses, only see her as patient and approachable. Hizashi, gaining insight into the different facets of Kuromiya Rei's life, feels a mixture of admiration and nervousness as he contemplates the intricacies of being a celebrity in a school setting. As the boys discuss the possibility of meeting up with Kuromiya Rei after school, one of them imagines a scenario where they would meet in an empty classroom. In this daydream, Kuromiya Rei playfully scolds him for being three minutes late, creating a light-hearted atmosphere. The two of them sit facing each other, engrossed in studying together, solving academic problems, and engaging in casual conversation. Unbeknownst to them, the imagined scenario reflects the real-life interaction between Kuromiya Rei and Hiruno Hizashi, who find themselves collaborating and building a unique connection through their study sessions. As Hizashi overhears the conversation among the boys, he can't help but feel nervous. One of the boys seemingly daydreaming about spending time with Kuromiya Rei, Rei after school is told to calm down by his friend, who dismisses the idea believing that Kuromiya Rei, I would never engage in such activities. Hizashi, feeling the weight of the discussion, hastily packs his bag. The words about online rumors and Kuromiya's perceived intelligence adding to his unease. The casual banter among the boys about the idol's actions adds another layer of complexity to Hizashi's understanding of Kuromiya Rei's life. Nervously, Hizashi packs his bag and leaves the classroom. After school in the familiar makeup class, Kuromiya Rae and Hiruno Hizashi sit down to study. Hizashi can't shake off the nervousness that has been building up. He glances at Kuromiya Rai, contemplating whether she has fully grasped the gravity of the situation. Gathering his courage, 
He nervously calls her over, intending to discuss his concerns about the potential online rumors. In a concerned tone, Hizashi asks Kurumi Ray if she wants to avoid any online rumors. She agrees, stating that it's obvious she wouldn't want such a thing. Curious if anything specific has happened, she questions him. Hizashi, realizing the potential for misunderstandings, decides to make a crucial decision. They continue their studies, and Hizashi observes Kuromiya Raya making significant progress in grasping the concepts. She engages in a discussion about the four types of nucleotides, emphasizing their dependence on complementary bases. Curious about a term, she asks if it is called DNA poly. Pleased with her progress, Hizashi confirms that it is indeed called DNA polymerase. He commends her, expressing happiness at her improved understanding, and encourages her by acknowledging her ability to remember the information well. Sharing her study habits, Kuromiya Rii reveals that she studies even during work, emphasizing the importance of staying ahead. Hizashi commends her dedication, expressing admiration for her commitment to continuous learning. He envisions their impending escape from supplementary lessons as her grasp on various subjects strengthens. However, the positive atmosphere takes an unexpected turn when Hizashi, seemingly out of concern, changes his seat, choosing to sit behind Kuromiya Rei. Perplexed by this abrupt move, Kuromiya Rei questions the motive behind his seating change. Hizashi, wrestling with potential trouble, clarifies that it's unrelated to her. Undeterred, Kuromiya Rei stands up and approaches him, intending to share a picture of his dog taken the other day. Surprisingly, Hizashi swiftly distances himself, evading her attempts at engagement. Left in confusion, Kuromiya Rei calls after him, seeking an explanation for his peculiar behavior, but Hizashi continues to walk away, leaving her puzzled about the sudden shift in dynamics. Hizashi, Feeling the weight of his concern, nervously admits that he changed his seat because he believes it's genuinely dangerous. Perplexed, Kuromiya Rei questions what he means by dangerous. In a horrified tone, Hizashi reveals his fear of an online rumor surfacing due to their interactions, potentially affecting her reputation. The revelation leaves Kuromiya Rei stunned. Returning to their seats in front of each other, she seeks clarification on whether his recent peculiar behavior was driven by concerns about rumors, reminding him of her earlier reassurance not to worry. She emphasizes her consistent caution regarding such matters. Despite her reassurance, Hizashi struggles to shake off his anxiety, revealing the challenges of navigating the delicate balance between ordinary school life and the complexities of being an idol. Kuromiya Rii questions Hizashi's tendency to make strong assumptions, prompting him to feel embarrassed for his actions. She expresses gratitude for his concern about potential online rumors, but emphasizes that there's no need for him to behave strangely, assuring him of his kindness. She thanks him for worrying about her and confirms that she hasn't heard any rumors and their secret remains safe. He relieved by her words, Hizashi is comforted. Kuromiya Rii encourages him to stop worrying about the situation emphasizing that further concerns are baseless. Despite this, she reassures him that she doesn't dislike him for caring about her. Nervous and trembling, Hizashi reflects on the complexity of navigating their unique relationship within the confines of their school environment. At that moment, Hizashi resolves to protect Kuromiya Rea from any potential rumors. Recognizing her as a professional idol who likely has crisis management strategies, he acknowledges there's still a reason for him to worry about her. Determined, he makes a promise to himself that he won't let any rumors spread about her due to his actions. This decision reflects his commitment to ensuring that their unique connection doesn't negatively impact her career. Suddenly, he is taken aback by surprise when she asks him to meet up over the weekend. This unexpected invitation leaves him in a state of wonder, curious about the reasons behind such a request. Her request to meet this weekend shocks him, bluntly suggesting to go to karaoke and then study. He hesitates before agreeing. She instructs him to head in first and wait for her. As the weekend arrives, Hizashi enters the karaoke venue, waiting nervously while contemplating how the situation seems to be spiraling out of control. Overthinking the potential worst-case scenarios, he wonders why he agreed to meet and dreads the explanations he might have to provide. Despite his decision to focus on his studies, Hizashi finds it hard to shake off the unsettling feeling of meeting on the weekend reminding himself not to dwell on negative thoughts. He can't help but ponder about the upcoming encounter. Questions about what she might wear and whether she'd come in disguise, given her status as an idol. 
flood his mind. Imagining how she'd look in normal life, he catches himself daydreaming and dismisses these peculiar fantasies. As he waits for her in the karaoke venue, Hizashi's thoughts are a whirlwind of curiosity, both about the meeting itself and the enigma that is Kuromi Areo outside the realm of her public persona. Suddenly, a girl enters, offering profuse apologies for her tardiness. In response to her question about waiting, Hizashi stands up, reassuring her that the wait wasn't too extended. However, a puzzled expression takes over his face as he gazes at her blonde hair. He can't help but wonder who this newcomer is and even questions if she might have entered the wrong room. Observing his perplexed expression, the girl discerns that Hizashi is unable to recognize her in her disguise. In an attempt to reveal her true identity, she removes her hat and wig, unveiling herself as Kuromi Rei, apologetic for startling him. She explains that she chose to come in disguise to keep her identity under wraps. Hizashi, now aware of the situation, expresses his surprise, and she suggests sitting in the back to continue their plans. As they engage in light conversation, Hizashi casually comments on the weather, suggesting that it feels slightly warm. Kuromi Rei promptly corrects him, noting that it's not even April yet and therefore the temperature can't be deemed warm. Hizashi, reflecting on her meticulous attention to detail, comprehends that she has been thoughtful and cautious about their situation from the very beginning. The realization dawns on him that he has been unnecessarily overthinking and worrying about the circumstances. Observing Kuromi Rei settling comfortably on the sofa, Hizashi hesitates to take a seat. Puzzled by his reluctance, she queries if he's not planning to sit. As he finally decides to join her, he can't help but notice her inherent beauty, even in a simple setting. In a moment of realization, he interrupts, questioning whether their purpose for the meeting is to study or to indulge in a karaoke session. With a musical instrument in hand, she assures him that indeed, their primary goal is to study. Contrary to their initial plan of a karaoke weekend, Hizashi and Kuromiya Rai find themselves engrossed in studying, the faint strains of music creating an unconventional study ambience. As they delve into a geometric problem, discussing the circumcenter being P and the origin marked as IO, Hizashi marvels at how seamlessly they can concentrate on their studies in this unexpected setting. Collaboratively, they tackle the problem, their minds focused on the intricacies of geometry. As the room's temperature rises, Kuromi Araiai starts feeling the warmth. Hizashi, observant of her discomfort, kindly offers her a body sheet to cool down. Grateful, she accepts the sheet and expresses her thanks, using it to wipe away the sweat. At that moment, Hizashi is captivated by her beauty in the simplicity of everyday clothes, feeling a renewed sense of freshness and excitement. Seeing Kuromi Areo by feeling too warm, Hizashi decides to take action to ensure their comfort. He informs her of his plan to lower the room's temperature, expressing concern about the possibility of heat stroke. With a few presses of a button, he adjusts the air conditioning system so that they don't get a stroke. Grateful for his consideration, Kodomi Rai thanked him for making the room more conducive to their study session. Amidst their study session, an advertisement suddenly appears on TV, featuring Kodomi Rai's group promoting their new song, Promised. In the ad, Kodomiya Rei earnestly encourages viewers, including her friends, to listen to the song. However, she becomes visibly embarrassed in front of Hizashi, expressing a desire for him not to watch it. Hizashi, surprised by her embarrassment, questions the logic behind her discomfort, to which she explains her reluctance for friends and family to see the ad while holding a tambourine. Perplexed, Hizashi considers the oddity of an idol feeling embarrassed by her advertisement and is reminded by the tambourine holder to stay focused on their studies. Following their study session, Kurumi Yaare expressed her intention to cover the bill. Hizashi, taken aback, insists that she doesn't need to pay. However, she asserts that as she works, it's the least she can do to show her gratitude. Hizashi maintains his stance that it's not right for her to cover the expenses, but she reasons that if she doesn't contribute, there's no benefit for him in coming here. Thus, she takes charge and insists on paying. The exchange showcases their different perspectives on reciprocity and gratitude. In response to Kurumiya Rai's suggestion to contribute 2,000 yen, Hizashi wonders about the benefits of tutoring her. He contemplates that his monthly allowance from her mother should cover that amount, to which she reveals that her allowance is not much different. This financial discussion adds a layer of complexity to their tutoring arrangement as they navigate the dynamics of payment and personal finances. 
In the lighthearted banter about the advantages of having karaoke with an idol, Kuromi Arii mentions it as a unique benefit for Hisashi. Blushing and flustered, he insists she refrain from making such comments. The scene takes a humorous turn as they engage in a friendly back and forth over the bill, each trying to assert their desire to pay. The comedic climax unfolds when, amid the banter, Kuromi Arai stumbles and falls, injecting an unexpected twist into the moment. After their unexpected tumble, both Kuromi Arai and Hizashi find themselves in a peculiar and awkward position on the sofa. Apologizing in haste, they quickly resume their seats, trying to navigate the awkwardness that lingers in the air. Breaking the awkward silence, Kuromi Arai, with a twinkle in her eye, suggests they lighten the mood by singing a song together. Despite Hizashi's initial hesitation and his offer to simply listen, Kuromi Arai playfully insists on a duet, adding an unexpected twist to their evening. As they delve into selecting a song, Hizashi, overwhelmed by the unexpected turn of events, struggles to concentrate. The potential for a musical collaboration adds an amusing touch to the previously uneasy atmosphere, leaving them both in a whimsical predicament. Amidst the song selection dilemma, Hizashi playfully proposes Kuromi Arai's recently released song, Promise. However, her immediate embarrassment and reluctance make it clear that Promise won't be their song of choice. Opting for a different tune, she sidesteps the suggestion, leaving Hizashi curious about her refusal. He cheekily reminds her that it's the same song she performed in music class, narrowing down their options. Despite the limited choices, they eventually settle on the only remaining song in the collection. Embracing the unexpected turn, they embark on a musical journey, only to discover that the chosen song is in English. As Hiruno Hizashi and Kuromi Rei immerse themselves in the joy of singing together during their unexpected karaoke session on the weekend, Hizashi finds himself reflecting on the motivations behind his desire to help her. Amidst the harmonies and laughter, he contemplates why he felt compelled to assist her in the first place. Pondering deeply, he questions whether his willingness to support her in studies stems from the fact that she is an idol, unraveling the layers of his motivations. The melody of their shared song becomes the backdrop to Hizashi's introspection, adding a nuanced dimension to their unique connection. As the karaoke session continues, Kuromi Arei Lai pauses the song, revealing that there's another verse left, but she struggles to read the lyrics. Hizashi, quick to adapt, proposes skipping the verse, and they continue with their duet. Once the song concludes, the melody gives way to the quiet ambiance of the karaoke room. Resuming their studies, Hizashi suggests shifting their focus to English, seamlessly blending the academic and musical aspects of their weekend rendezvous. He lets her know that it was a little awkward, but he is glad that they were able to sing it together. Kuromi Arayar lets him know that she has been enjoying her studies lately because of him. He is happy to hear that and lets her know about it too. She says that she is always grateful to him. That's why she wants to repay him. She says that it is good if he doesn't get any benefit from teaching her. She adds that if she is the only one on the receiving end, then she doesn't deserve to be taught by him in the first place because she wants to be friends with him. She says that idols are supposed to give inspiration to people. He looks at her still stunned and lets her know he understands her. He says that he got swept away and he shouldn't have been here. He lets her know with shyness that he doesn't like the way she keeps saying the benefit thing so much. He says that he has already gotten a lot of benefit by teaching her. He says that her determination to pursue her goals without giving up even when she is busy with her work doesn't show it at all. Watching it from the side is quite amazing for him. He lets her know that he admires her and likes it when she is working hard to achieve her goals. He says that he wants to be friends with her and that it is the only reason he has. Flustered by his own words, Hizashi quickly apologizes to Kuromiya Rai, asking her not to take it too seriously. He tries to clarify that it was just a general sentiment and feels he might have explained it weirdly. Seeking assurance, he awkwardly asks if they are friends. Kuromi Aria Rie denies his question and assures him that she wants to be his friend too, leaving him startled. Awkwardly, Hizashi expresses that he's fine with that, and it's enough for him in terms of tutoring her. He can't help but feel shy, a slight blush coloring his cheeks. Despite his initial reluctance, Kuromi Arai insists on giving Hizashi something in return, asking if he'd like to hear her sing her new song. He hesitates, questioning if it's all right for her to perform a song that has just been released. She stands up, admitting it's a bit embarrassing as she's never sung for anyone privately before, but she expresses her desire for him to hear it, 
As a token of gratitude for his help in their studies, she treats him to a private rendition of her new song. Kuromi Araya engages in a conversation with her friend Sora about her day and the karaoke experience with Hizashi. Sora inquires about how the karaoke session went and what they did. Kuromi Arai, not wanting to share the details, tells Sora to stop prying like an uncle. Sora laughs at her friend's response and comments on how it's good for her to have found a friend with whom she can truly be herself. Kuromi Arai agrees with Sora's observation. Despite this, Sora circles back to her earlier question, asking once more about the day and the karaoke. Kuromi Arai, maintaining the mystery, informs Sora that it's a secret. Having no choice left, Sora suggests discussing it when they meet next time. Kiramiya Rei Ye takes center stage as the focal point of the Blue Impulse. Recently, her popularity has been skyrocketing thanks to her compelling performances as an idol and her attendance at a prestigious school. With an impressive blend of talents, she has earned the title of the Genius Idol. After the delightful karaoke session and the enjoyable weekend they spent together, Kuromi Yarei expressed her gratitude to Hizashi for the wonderful day. In response, Hizashi humbly replies, letting her know that he should be the one thanking her. The mutual appreciation lingers, adding a touch of warmth to their growing friendship. As Kuromi Yarei reflects on her day, she contemplates the secret she harbors, one that she cannot share with anyone. Flashbacks of her conversation with Hizashi about becoming friends cross her mind, and she wonders if she said anything embarrassing, trying to shift her focus. She reminds herself of the need to revise today's lessons. Amidst these thoughts, she can't help but notice that Hizashi appeared a bit stylish during their time together. As Hizashi returns home, he is surprised to find his sister, Akari, waiting for him. She warmly welcomes him and inquires about his day, specifically the karaoke session. Hizashi, feeling a bit embarrassed, attempts to explain the situation, but his efforts only seem to make things worse. Akari comments on his reaction, finding it disgusting. Nevertheless, she asks if it was a good choice on her part to select clothes for him. Despite the awkwardness, Hizashi agrees and expresses gratitude for her assistance with his sudden request. Later in his room, Hizashi changes into his pajamas for the night. Curious about his outfit, he seeks Akari's opinion. She candidly remarks that the clothes look a bit lame. Despite the remarks, Hizashi appreciates her preventing any embarrassment about his attire. Akari reminds him that he owes her one. Hizashi suggests that he should consider buying another pair of pajamas, prompting laughter from Akari. He quickly clarifies that it's not that the current pajamas are strange, but rather having an extra set could be useful just in case. Hizashi, while writing something in this notebook, stops and starts searching for stylish pajamas online when he receives a notification from Kuromiya Rai. Her message mentions that despite practicing today, there are still some aspects she doesn't understand. He wonders about her difficulties, and she proposes to discuss it over a call. This catches him off guard as he's a simple, introverted high schooler who, despite owning a smartphone, has never made a call. Hizashi, contemplating how to respond to Kuromi Arei's request for a call, feels the pressure of choosing the right answer. Conflicted between a simple it's fine and a more affirmative let's do it, he decides to go with the latter. However, unsure and a bit frustrated by the delay in his response, he eventually opts to make a call. As he searches for the right button on his phone, he accidentally triggers the video call feature. Caught off guard by the unintentional video call, Hizashi greets Kuromi Aria and expresses embarrassment at the unexpected visual interaction. Kuromi Arei, seemingly unfazed, observes that he now appears more like his usual self compared to his daytime attire. Puzzled by her comment, Hizashi is left contemplating the implications of his clothing choices, reflecting on his past indifference toward personal style. Hizashi acknowledges a sense of regret for not paying more attention to his appearance. He realizes the folly of being content with the clothes his mother bought, considering the expressions on his sister's face at the time. The desire for change and a wish for a more thoughtful approach to his attire linger in his thoughts. Kuromi Arei, still on the video call, notices Hizashi's bright red face and playfully questions if he's truly okay. Ignoring his embarrassment, she proceeds to discuss her math problems with him. Hizashi listens attentively and provides a clear explanation emphasizing the importance of understanding the basics of math. After his explanation, he asks if she comprehends the concept, and she affirms her understanding. 
Kuromi Araye reflects on their shared experience of being in supplementary lessons and getting scolded by their parents, initially marking a negative start. However, she expresses happiness at the positive impact of their friendship, noting how they can now study together and enjoy phone conversations. Hizashi agrees with Kuromi Araye's observation about their conversation shifting from math problems to more personal matters. They both acknowledge the unique nature of their relationship and the positive influence it has had on their study habits and overall happiness. As Kurumi Arai feels the weight of the late hour, she mentions to Hizashi that it's getting quite late and she should probably get some rest. Hizashi concurs, proposing to end the call, and he checks if that's agreeable with her. However, before she can respond, Kurumi Arai, clearly fatigued, collapses onto her bed, wishing him a good night as the call concludes. Tossing and turning in bed, Hizashi finds himself in a state of shock after Kuromi Ray's unexpected good night. His mind replays the events of their growing friendship, and he can't help but feel that the situation is escalating beyond his control. Determined to make a change, he resolves to go shopping over the weekend, hoping to find a solution to the growing complexities of his friendship with Kuromi Rai before finally drifting off to sleep. As morning light crept through his window, Hizashi realized he hadn't slept a wink. His night had been a chaotic dance of thoughts, swirling with the echoes of his unexpected call with Kuromi Arei. Little did he know, the day ahead held the promise of unraveling more mysteries and forging deeper connections. In mid-May, with the looming specter of the next term exam just two weeks away, Hizashi finds himself muttering in frustration. While Kuromi Arei manages to juggle her busy idle schedule and maintain steady academic progress, Hizashi grapples with the need to support himself and elevate his studies. The pressure mounts and the challenge ahead seems daunting. A girl standing nearby catches sight of Hizashi talking to himself and finds it a tad unnerving. Hizashi, caught up in his inner dialogue about the need to intensify his efforts to cover Japanese history, is suddenly interrupted when someone offers him a tin of juice. Startled, he looks up to find Mayo, a girl from a different class, standing before him. Curious about her presence, he questions why she's here since they aren't in the same class. Ignoring his inquiry, Mayo invites him to join the Spacha event after school with class 2. Hizashi, slightly taken aback, wonders why she thinks he would attend. Mayo nonchalantly suggests they have some fun, emphasizing the importance of making new friends alongside studying. Hizashi, focused on passing his exams, expresses his determination. Undeterred, Mao insists that while she may not be able to assist him in studying, she can certainly help him make new friends. Hizashi, feeling a bit agitated, firmly asserts that it's not her business to interfere. Mayo, once Hizashi's preschool friend, has transformed into a sociable jiaru, breaking away from the traditional Japanese fashion norms. Now, she stands at the center of her class, radiating a distinct style with her tanned skin and blonde hair. Hizashi, defending his friendship, mentions having friends who made groups with him and others who let him tag along during class switches. However, Mao remarks that his definition of friendship seems quite basic. Perplexed, he questions whether her uniform and hair violate the school rules. In response, Mao expresses her ignorance about such rules and reproaches him for not being kind. Hizashi, feeling apologetic, explains that he was feeling down. Mao, observing the situation, offers to find a teacher for him so he can skip the supplementary lessons. Hizashi, however, declines the offer, expressing that he's fine with attending the supplementary class. Mao, acknowledging his intelligence, suggests that skipping one class won't impact his grades. Despite her encouragement, Hizashi maintains his decision to attend the supplementary lessons. In the regular supplementary class after school, Mao unexpectedly accompanies Hizashi. Confused, he questions why she didn't go to Spocha. She says that everything got cancelled at the end. He asks what about her club to which she replies that it is off today. She says that she is free, so she thought she had to have him teach her. He rejects her request and tells her that he is not in the mood to teach right now. She asks him if they are always kind of stuck together. He agrees, saying that it may be because they are neighbors. She suggests that her mother said to come over and have dinner with them sometime. He nods and says to let Akari know about it. She looks at him and tells him that she heard he got a mobile phone. She suggests exchanging contact information, and he agrees. But then she asks if he has Instagram or Snapchat. Suddenly, Kuromi Ariai enters the classroom and finds the two talking about social accounts. All of them are a little puzzled by seeing each other. Kuromiya, Ray nervously comes in and sits in front of them. 
Shakingly, she announces that today, Hisashi is going to tackle Japanese history, a subject he isn't confident about. They decide to start with the periodization challenge, and Hisashi nervously asks her to mention them from the beginning. The presence of Mao in the classroom adds to his nervousness. In his anxious state, he accidentally utters the period of human history with the dinosaurs, realizing his mistake immediately. He corrects himself, clarifying that he meant the periodization of humans, not dinosaurs. They proceed to discuss periodization, exchanging nervous glances as they navigate through the topic. The atmosphere in the room becomes a blend of tension and uneasy laughter. Mayo senses the tension in the atmosphere and wonders why Kuromiya Rei is present in the supplementary class. While Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei are engrossed in their studies, Mao decides to break the ice and greets Kuromiya Rei. Hizashi, seizing the opportunity, introduces Mao to Kuromiya Rei, mentioning that Mayo is in class two and is his childhood friend. He explains that Kuromiya Rei is here to assist him with his studies. The introduction sparks a moment of connection among the three momentarily easing the awkwardness. A few days ago, Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei had preemptively planned how to handle the situation if someone caught them studying together. Their strategy involved reversing their roles, with Kuromiya Rei taking on the role of the tutor while Hizashi became the student. Although he agreed to the idea, Hizashi humorously mentioned his lack of acting experience. Kuromiya Rai, in response, advised him to mimic her actions in such situations. Both of them resume their study session in the presence of Mayo. Kuromiya Rai quizzes Hizashi about who was removed from power during the Tika reforms. Hizashi confidently answers Soga no Kujiro, only to be corrected by Kuromiya Rai. This moment of error shakes Hizashi, making him question whether he's approaching things correctly. Meanwhile, his phone buzzes with a message from Kuromiya Rai asking if she appears that clueless to him. The simultaneous phone activity raises curiosity in Mao's mind about their dynamic. Mao asks them if they are hiding something. She adds that when Hizashi feels guilty about something, his right hand trembles weirdly, taking Hizashi by surprise. She adds that Hizashi is not that dumb to answer to not know answers to such easy questions. She questions if what they were doing was an act earlier. She questions what they are hiding, the probing questions make both Hizashi and Kuromiya Rai, Rai panic, fearing that their carefully guarded secret might be on the verge of exposure in front of Mao. Hizashi, gripped by nerves and terror at the thought of Kuromiya Rai's secret being exposed, realizes the potential consequences of the situation. If her secret is revealed now, all the efforts she has put into maintaining her privacy would be in vain. Desperate to divert Mao's suspicions, he stammers out an explanation, claiming he is grateful for Mao's encouraging words, but he's genuinely struggling with his studies. Mao, observing the discomfort and distress in both Hizashi and Kuromiya Rai, feels remorseful for pushing the situation. She expresses that it's not fair to judge someone based on a single perspective and to humble oneself unnecessarily. Hizashi, in response, apologizes for the confusion caused. Mao extends her apology to Kuromiya Rei, acknowledging that everyone has their circumstances and she shouldn't have probed into their affairs. Kuromiya Rei, left somewhat stunned, appreciates Mao's understanding and finds herself unsure of how to respond. Mao reassures her, suggesting they move past the awkward moment. Kuromiya Rei looks at her for a while and then spits out the truth. She lets Mao know that Hizashi is helping her in her studies. Mao and Hizashi are taken aback by her revealing the truth. Kuromiya Rie continues and tells Mao that she is bad at studying due to which she has to take supplementary lessons, and Hizashi has agreed to help her out. Mao is shocked to hear the news. She is not able to digest the truth as on the news. Kuromiya Rei is known to be a genius. She asks if being a genius is a lie. She says that it is hard to believe what has been just said by Kuromiya Rei. All of them are embarrassed and awkward. However, Mayo motivates Kuromiya Rei and lets her know that she will also help her study when she does not have a club or a part-time job to do. She will come here and help her study. Kuromiya Rei downplays the situation and advises not to dwell on it, considering it her issue. Hizashi makes a call to Kuromiya Rei, expressing his belief in Mao's honesty and her ability to keep secrets, which makes Mayo happy. He encourages Kuromiya Rei to trust Mao with her secret. Reluctantly, Kuromiya Rei seeks Mao's assistance, who readily agrees to help. In a hushed tone, Mao compliments Kuromiya Rei's beauty to Hizashi, leaving him in a moment of self-reflection about the dynamics between them. 
He makes second guesses as to whether they should include her in the secret or not. Mao is pleased to believe that Hizashi might have found the clarity he was seeking. Mao extends a friendly invitation to Kuromi Yarai, suggesting they spend some time together despite her busy schedule. Excitedly, Kuromi Yarai agrees to the idea. Hizashi, concerned about their academic responsibilities with midterms approaching, questions Mao about her readiness. Mao, with a hint of confusion, informs him that she already had a test three days ago, revealing her usual tendency to procrastinate on studying. Mao inquires about their progress in studying, and they reveal that they are currently in the second round of reviewing test subjects. Curious, Mao asks if both Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei are actively studying. Hizashi mentions Kuromiya Rei's dedication, noting that she even studies during work breaks. Mao playfully comments that Kuromiya Rei should find the upcoming test easy with such diligence. Kuromiya Rei then brings up Nobunaga's famous quote about energy being in the Hanojai temple. Hizashi, finding the person and quote mismatched, points out the discrepancy. Hizashi, with a touch of humor, tears up as he exaggerates Kuromiya Rei's academic struggles, claiming that he believes she has transformed into a different person. He playfully suggests to Mao that she should take notes from Kuromiya Rai's unique study methods, adding a humorous twist to their conversation. Mao, wearing a proud expression, quizzes Hizashi about who he thinks she is. With a self-assured grin, she answers her question, proclaiming herself to be an expert in last-minute studying. Hizashi, impressed, acknowledges her impressive memory. Mayo then reveals her extraordinary feat of reciting a hundred digits of P.I., leaving Kuromiya Rei in awe. Mayo casually mentions that she only studied for a month before the entrance exam and still managed to pass, adding a humorous touch to the conversation. Hizashi, curious about Mao's study habits, questions if studying is easy for her given that she only needs to glance through her notes. Expressing concern, he emphasizes that overnight cramming isn't sufficient, especially when it's just Mayo adopting such a strategy. He reminds her of her earlier commitment not to rely on last-minute cramming for exams. Both Hizashi and Mao then turn their attention to Kuromiya Rei, realizing they inadvertently excluded her from the conversation, and they apologize for the oversight. Mao, feeling a bit awkward after the conversation, assures Kuromiya Rei that it's okay and mentions that they are really good friends. However, Mayo suddenly recalls something she has to do, hastily gathers her belongings, and informs them that she'll be heading back first. With a quick exit, she leaves the classroom in a hurry, leaving Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei pondering over the recent turn of events. Hizashi apologizes to Kuromiya Rei for the complications they face today. She responds, saying that it seemed like a fun experience for her. Curious about Mao, she asks Hisashi if they have been friends for a long time. Hisashi explains that Mao is like a family member, which is why he feels comfortable around her. Kuromiya Rei encourages him to speak to her in the same way, but this idea makes him nervous. He confesses that he can't speak so casually with her, explaining that she's just too amazing. This revelation leaves Kuromiya Rei stunned. Kuromiya Rei proposes that they drop the honorifics to make their conversation more casual. Hizashi attempts to steer the conversation back to studying, but she insists on understanding why he can't speak comfortably around her. She declares that she won't study unless he changes his way of speaking. Hizashi, feeling a bit overwhelmed, pleads for mercy and suggests waiting five more years for him to adapt. Kuromiya Rei finds the suggested time frame too long and lets him know that she can't wait that long. From outside the window, Mayo observes Hizashi and Kuromiya Rei engaged in conversation. She reflects on her decision to help Kuromiya Rei, wondering why she agreed to get involved in their study session. Doubt and curiosity linger in her mind as she watches them interact. She wonders why she agreed to help Kuromiya Rei. She questions herself why she did that. With less than two weeks left until the midterm exams, Hizashi expresses his concern about the upcoming tests. Observing Kuromiya Rei using her smartphone, he inquires about what she is looking at. She informs him that Mao has sent her study materials, indicating their need to catch up on their test studies. Examining the contents of the phone, Hizashi realizes that it's a memorization app. Kuromiya Rei mentions that Mao taught her the keywords to input, leaving Hizashi astonished at the existence of such a study method. Terrified, he contemplates that with this memorization technique, he might no longer have a role in helping her study. Observing Hizashi's terrified expression, 
Koromiya Rei notes that there's a part she doesn't comprehend, which sparks a glimmer of hope in him. Curious, he inquires about the problem, and she presents a challenging question that could be solved using a formula. However, she expresses difficulty in grasping the underlying logic behind it. Hizashi, caught in the complexity of the Japanese study materials, nervously suggests going through the material once more. Kuromiya Rei, sharing his confusion, questions whether he comprehends the written question. The pressure mounts and beads of sweat form on Hizashi's forehead as he admits to struggling with understanding the question himself. Realizing the situation, Kuromiya Rei apologizes for stopping him from going alone. She reassures him that he is indeed worthy of tutoring her. Understanding her sincerity, Hizashi appreciates her support and decides to face the challenge together. They exchange encouraging words, emphasizing the importance of teamwork in tackling difficult questions. With newfound determination, they head towards the teacher's laboratory, ready to unravel the logic behind the perplexing question and strengthen their understanding of the subject. She asks him if he remembers the first words he had said. She reminds him that he had asked her if she would like to solve the problem together. She leaves the room where she finds people bidding her by and asking where she is going. Feeling a mix of embarrassment and self-reflection, Hizashi contemplates his recent behavior. He acknowledges that he might have overreacted and regrets not being more upfront about his strengths and weaknesses. He stands there thinking that he got ahead of himself, wondering if it is something other than memorization. He could still teach her, but in the end, he hid that. And now he did the lamest thing. He wonders how he is being so weird lately. He does not like what he did. He wonders how he can stop himself from acting strangely, especially around someone as remarkable as Karomiya Rai. The dilemma of wanting to be genuine while struggling with his insecurities swirls in his mind. Upon reaching the laboratory, Hizashi and Karomiya Ria I approach the teacher to discuss the challenging question. The teacher recognizes the problem they're referring to and explains it to help them understand the underlying logic. As they engage in the discussion, Hizashi begins to feel a sense of relief, realizing that seeking help and learning together can be a more constructive approach than trying to tackle everything on his own. The teacher goes on to explain the scientific principles behind earthquakes, emphasizing that the shaking is confined to the ground and spreads out in a three-dimensional radial pattern. To determine the epicenter, it's essential to gather information from three distinct points. Additionally, the teacher introduces the use of the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the depth of the hippocenter. Hizashi and Koromiya Rea absorb the information, feeling a newfound understanding of the topic. The teacher's guidance not only clarifies the specific problem, but also enhances their overall comprehension of earthquake mechanics. The realization of the power and simplicity of the Pythagorean theorem leaves Koromiya Rea stunned. Meanwhile, Hizashi appreciates the depth of his teacher's guidance, acknowledging that it goes beyond providing mere answers. He briefly wonders if the teacher's involvement might hinder Kuromiya Rie's learning. However, the teacher dispels any such notion, emphasizing that the question isn't basic, but rather a testament to the student's dedicated study. As he learns their names and student numbers, the teacher expresses genuine happiness at witnessing their commitment to learning and hard work. In a moment of unintentional honesty, Hizashi attributes his efforts to Kuromiya Rei, emphasizing her role in his dedication to teaching. Realizing the implications of his words, he panics, but Kuromiya Rei pleasantly surprises him by expressing her gratitude to the teacher and declaring Hizashi as the best teacher for her. Despite his confusion about her, he appreciates her smile of relief upon understanding the logic behind the question. Despite Hizashi's initial belief that Kuromiya Rei struggles with studies, the teacher encourages them both, expressing confidence that their hard work will lead to success. This encouragement motivates them to strive for their best in the upcoming exams. There are only a few days left for the midterms to start. These tests are going to determine if Kuromiya Rai's idol work will continue or not. This time, Hizashi's disownment is also at stake. As Kuromiya Rai heads home for her lesson, he bids her bye with the looming midterms weighing heavily on his mind. The results hold the fate of both the idol's career and Hizashi's disownment. Little do they know that an unexpected twist awaits on the horizon, a twist that could alter the course of their lives in ways they never anticipated. The approaching midterms carry not only the weight of academic success, but also the potential for unforeseen challenges and revelations. The countdown begins, and the unknown awaits, casting a shadow over their intertwined destinies. As the clock ticks down, signaling the commencement of the midterms, 
an air of anticipation envelops the examination hall. Hizashi Mao and Kuromiya Rei brace themselves for the academic challenge ahead. The exam finally starts and the silence is broken only by the rustling of questioned papers and the occasional scratch of pencils against paper. The stage is set and the trio embarks on the journey of answering the questions that will determine their fate. The midterms unfold as a pivotal moment, holding the potential to shape the future paths of these intertwined lives. The atmosphere post-exam is a blend of relief and apprehension. As they engage in a quick post-mortem of the paper, Hizashi raises a pragmatic question about the accuracy of numbering in the answer column, a detail that could be easily overlooked in the rush of exam fervor. Both the girls agree giving him shorty. They ask each other how the exam went. Mao, with her characteristic focus on the future, suggests putting self-reflection on hold for the moment and gearing up for the next academic challenge. Hizashi looks at Kuromaya Rei with concern in his eyes. He wants her to pass the tests, but first, he has to concentrate on himself. The anticipation and pressure build as the next test unfolds, subjecting Hizashi, Mao, and Kuromiya Rei to another round of assessment. Time seems to elapse swiftly and soon, the command to cease writing reverberates through the examination hall. However, for Kuromi Yarei, the struggle intensifies as she finds it challenging to concentrate. The stress manifests physically, with heightened body temperature and a sense of lightness in her extremities. In this moment of tension and uncertainty, the repeated call to put pens down serves as a stark reminder of the finite nature of the examination period. As Karomia Rei grapples with the difficulty of the exams, she finds solace in an unconventional strategy, visualizing her fans as potatoes. This whimsical mental image serves as a quirky coping mechanism, allowing her to navigate the challenges of the test and maintain focus. Yet beneath the amusing facade, the weight of the exams looms large and Karomia Rei grapples with self-doubt, questioning whether she could have studied more or answered questions correctly. She wonders if she did the fifth question correctly after the exam is over. She thinks if she could have studied more, she is terrified to think what if the exam didn't go well. She also thinks about her working hours for today as she needs to think of lyrics for a new song. She reminds herself that she needs to pass the exams first or there won't be another work for her. Ineo notices Kuromiya Rei panicking. She wonders if the idol is doing all right. She looks terrible. She wonders that in times like these, Hizashi is always there for her. She looks at him to find him panicking too. She thinks that she is not a very helpful person at this time. She gets an idea to ease the air. She calls Kuromiya Rei and asks her to look at Hizashi. She gets concerned after seeing him in a state of panic. She asks if he is all right. Mao tells Kuromiya Rei that this is the normal state for Hizashi to be in before an exam starts. She questions if seeing someone being more nervous than her would help her calm down or not. Kuromiya Rei looks at Hizashi again and laughs a little admitting that she feels calm after seeing him panic more than her. She says that she thinks tests and lives are the same. They just have to do their best. Hizashi mutters to himself and tries to remember everything he has studied. Mao looking at him asked Kuromiya Rei, if his habit of overthinking hadn't gone. She replies letting her know that it has increased by saying that he worries unnecessarily. He worries about the things he doesn't have to worry about. Mayo thinks that Hizashi worries worriedly and is helpless about it. However, she thinks it is amazing that he still cares about others in his worry. They go to the, the canteen to eat something where he offers the two girls if they would like to eat some glucose. Both of them say that they want the glucose at once, creating a momentarily, a sense of relief, they discuss how sugar intake is the most important thing before the test. After the visit to the canteen, they head back to the class where their exam is about to start. The students are asked to sit on their seats. Kurumi Yare goes to her seat while wondering about her mouth being too sweet because of the glucose. She wonders if she could have studied more in the exam while asking herself to focus on the exam. She looks around and glances at Hizashi, who is looking at her. She thinks that if he could have relaxed like this, she could have looked at him to ease her tension. Amid the exam preparation, Hizashi grapples with nerves, attempting to focus on the notes the names of books and authors blur in his anxious mind, and in a sudden burst of panic, he clears away the clutter, desperately trying to streamline his... As his notes cascade to the floor, a sense of disarray surrounds him. He stands up from his seat and organizes his scattered notes back. Among them, he discovers a heartfelt thank you note. 
a token of appreciation for the energy boost he provided, this unexpected gesture momentarily lifts his spirits. Regaining composure, Hizashi returns to his seat, exchanging determined glances with Kuromi Arei. Together, they brace themselves for the challenges posed by the upcoming exams, a testament to their shared commitment to giving their best effort.